seems to have been a change in the United States, ironically initiating with a Republican administration, which appropriates to the state, to the government, now the power not only to take people out in third countries, but to listen in. But, but Philippe, three things are going on, technological capacity, legal authority, and rights. So on technological capacity, data mining now gives extraordinary possibilities to assemble information. And the question is, when does that violate a reasonable expectation of privacy? So uh, what the president came out and said, and it has to be tested in court, and it is, by the way. I mean, there are two lawsuits already filed. I'm sure that um, if Snowden is prosecuted, he will raise these issues. But the, the core of it was that you cannot gather information this way, uh, when in fact a lot of what is apparently being described is, uh, is connecting dots and connecting calls. So there are obviously examples where this was done. Whether that was overbroad or not remains to be determined. That's a technological issue. The legal authority issue is, Congress passed a law called the Patriot Act. I didn't like it. It was widely supported by Congress. Uh, it has a section that permits this. It's been authorized repeatedly under it. The Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court issued an order under it. And now someone's challenging this as potentially unconstitutional. Um, and I think that's a very interesting question and asking for a release of the legal opinion justifying it. So I think that opinion should come out. The government should defend it in court. But it's an uphill battle uh, if it's been authorized by the president, Congress, uh, and repeatedly affirmed by a court. And then the third part of this is the individual rights of those who are challenging this and whether they have uh, capacity to go into court to challenge it. Um, in this case, I think they very likely do because they hold contracts with these companies. I think the fundamental question comes down to this. When you are sitting there typing into uh, Facebook or Google or something, your private information, uh, are you aware and um, is your privacy violated if it turns out that metadata from that is being used to connect the dots with regard to terrorist networks? You've dealt with three elements. There's a fourth element, and that's the international dimension, which you could unpackage into two aspects. International legal requirements that constrain that type of behavior, but also the impact in third countries, including the United Kingdom. I think people in Britain have been genuinely shocked at the possibility uh, that outside of the protections they don't have under the US Constitution, they may be sitting on their computer, on Facebook, on Google, whatever. Would you that the, that, hang on, that the material is making its way to the National Security Agency, which is then going behind the door and making it available to British uh, services allowing the British services to avoid the constraints of domestic UK law. That's the allegation. I don't know. Well, you guys have a TV show which we watch. It's called MI5, right? I mean, <laughs> the United States has the CIA and the FBI, and the CIA is supposed to operate outside under the National Security Act, and the FBI is supposed to operate inside. The major revelation is that an organization called the National Security Agency is actually doing domestic data gathering. That was news to me. It's obviously highly classified, and they have tremendous te technical capacities. As I understand it here in the UK, you have the Metropolitan Police, and you have MI6, and then you have this thing called MI5, which, as I understand it, does domestic activities, domestic surveillance. Now, it may well be that GCHQ has gotten information from the FBI that now violates UK law, but I would say on this, the UK has been the pioneer, not the United States.